being a pastor, I have had many uh, pictures on my phone where people will call you, check, is it from God? Really? Check, is it from God? And sometimes I ask them, why should I check? But on a more serious note, is marriage from God? In terms of what? Ah, marriage is sometimes wrong. Mm. Marriage, marriage is from, from God. God. It's from and you're asking me in terms of... Yeah, marriage is from God. And so in terms of DNA, now person who would... And so in person who would be a with the fever. Ah, me say it's marriage from God. Yeah, marriage is from God. Now so baby, I'm the fever. Uh, what channel is I? Maybe I know the channel back on. You're watching the biggest and the largest. We are the biggest, we are the largest. We are the greatest. We are the tallest African spiritual platform. I'm always queen. Hadra Shakomi Empress Makida. I am Labraska the Sun Goddess. I am the woman of peace. I, I send you love wherever you are. Love, love, and hate it. Love is the greatest asset. So, the Bibadia will be Kobiano. Now, we'll chit chat each other. No, Eddie Guru, no, no, and the baby we are seeing. In fact, love is God. I, I welcome you people. It's another episode. Today we are going to talk about um, prophecy, marriage. Does prophecy, marriage has to come through prophecy. Or how does it work in the realms of the spirit? That's what we are actually going to discuss. I welcome you people to another great episode. Let's welcome our guest for today. Papa, we welcome you to Revelations. Thank you very much. Great. Today is your first time on this biggest platform. So I want you to pay obeisance to my followers, greet them, introduce yourself to us. Let's know who you are before we come to the topic. Hey, I want to personally thank every individual for this great opportunity. My name is Reverend of Menya, and I'm a pastor at the Radiant Place, Tesano. And we are here just to share our knowledge, learn and educate ourselves. God bless you. And I also want to thank everybody following our sister and supporting our sister. God bless you. Yo, God bless you. Are you, um, 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 what's the name? His pastor. Uh, what's your boss or oh, your boss's name? Your Apostle son. Emmanuel Inkum. Emmanuel Inkum's uh, uh, pastor. Yeah. Uh, he's been here twice yeah. uh, or three times or so. In fact, when we started the show, he even offered his church for us. So wow. we were shooting there. Wow. Uh, so whatever. Wow. Uh, so my love to him when you go back. I welcome you to Revelations. Thank you. Abusia, your guest for today, and you have a discussion. I worry, say free now, a few in your me honey, like in come shame when you free, but an answer say, so we receive the word of God, and so when we say, so we need shame, my grace, you want, over worry, and an answer say, and only you have a discussion. But you were a pastor. How long have you been a pastor? Uh, almost 15 years. 15? Yeah. And you watch it. They said Jesus had brothers. I don't believe or in that. Siblings. I don't believe in that theology. He doesn't though. have brothers. I don't believe in that theology. Ah, uh, you do. Oh, I just want to know whether. Yeah. That's what I said. You I don't, don't believe, believe in those you theology. Don't know. I don't believe in those theology. I don't believe. I don't know. Yeah, there is a difference between I don't know uh -huh. and there's the difference between I don't believe. believe. Okay, so I didn't what, actually ask whether you believe in that. I don't. I you, didn't you ask asked that. whether I know. Uh, then I said I don't believe in it. I know and believe. Uh -huh. Are they the same? Even if they knowing are not the same. Knowing something and believing something. So I can know, I know something. I know there is mm -hmm. uh, weedy sites. Mm -hmm. They used to spray uh, weed mm -hmm. with it. I know there is that weedy site, but mm -hmm. I don't believe in that weedy mm -hmm. site. So don't spray it on, mm -hmm. in my farm. Mm -hmm. You get mm -hmm. it? That's this mm -hmm. thing. So what are you saying? So you asked a question. Mm -hmm. That do I know uh, that... Uh, I didn't say they, you, do you know. I said they say. They say. Jesus has siblings. So the reason I don't do pay more attention to that is I don't believe in those that theory. So you don't know? Not that I don't know. Do you we know? We have heard. You have heard? We have what heard. What did you hear? That is the same thing you are saying, that Jesus had siblings. Uh -huh. But because I'm not a fan of that, I wouldn't pay attention to it. Have you watched any of our shows before? Yeah. You, you've watched any yeah, of Yeah, I've watched many of your shows. What do you make out of it? I feel people come here to share their knowledge mm -hmm. and sometimes uh, people speak based on the knowledge they have. So I think it's a very nice program and we just appreciate you for it. Oh, okay. You are watching the biggest and the largest. So looking at Christianity now mm -hmm. and everything that is going on on social media and about Christianity itself and okay. the pastors fighting, what's your mm -hmm. take on that? 
in terms of Oh, I said a lot of things. You didn't hear anything. I heard it. Uh -huh. But I just so want when you to you ask me contextual, in terms of contextual answer asking. how you understood what I okay. said. Okay. People will talk, as I said earlier, people will talk based on their knowledge. But sometimes when you have a personal conversation with them, then you understand where they are coming from. Then we can situate whatever thing they are saying in the context of the scripture. Then explanation can be made. What have you heard about Christianity in terms of social media and everything? What have you seen? Three things you have seen mm -hmm. that encouraged you and give you more hope okay. that Christianity would dominate the world. Mm -hmm. And what three things did you see that you feel this is not to the glory of uh, Christianity? Okay, let me three start things with out there. Okay, mm -hmm. when I hear people fighting about Titan, sometimes I get sad because the Bible is very simple when it comes to the issue of Titan. You understand? So sometimes I don't see why people should fight pertaining Titan. Then secondly, when I see people fighting over directions, and this one believes that my direction is more powerful than the other, I feel, I feel there is something wrong with it. I feel the fact that God has given you a specific direction does not necessarily mean that the fellow person's direction may not be correct. And sometimes all directions may come under the supremacy of the word of God, which means we must investigate every direction you think you are giving out there. Then secondly, when people think, uh, lastly, when people think that their prophetic word is much super than the other person's prophetic word, I feel that is not right because in respect perspective of the level you are in the prophetic, there is somebody who will be higher than you or lower than you. But if we are doing all to the glory of God, irrespective of whatever you say or I say, we are still glorifying God. Okay, then what, Yes, and the, and the other aspect I see that it will glorify God is when I see people in our generation actually talking more about God, whether negatively or positively. I feel the name of Jesus is being mentioned and that's one I much more appeal to that. Then the next thing is when I see young people actually today going to a lot of programs, talking more about Jesus Christ because any moment you go to the social media, one way or the other, you see people talking about the gospel and it's it, it, it brings kind of joy to me that at least people are now getting to understand. And I've seen a lot of people on social media also beginning to ask questions to know the truth and how the truth must be told. So I'm much more pleased with that. Okay, so you touch base with two things. The tightening. Okay. Direction. Okay. Can you give us scriptures in the New Testament that say we should tight? Okay. Now, in Bible study, there is something we call the law of first mention. Where the word was first mentioned, that is where the word originated from. And the first time you hear the word Titan is the book of Genesis, when Abraham gave tithes. Abraham never paid tithes. Abraham gave tithes. There is the difference between to pay and to give. They are not the same. Now, Abraham gave willingly. Nobody forced Abraham to give. So people that followed Abraham, people like Isaac, people like Jacob, they give willingly without anybody asking them to pay. But now, Abraham lived 430 years before the law was given. So Abraham lived before the law was given. But when the law came, because God raised people of the Levites, now, the people of the Levites were not working so that tithe would be given to them for them to take care of themselves. Now, so there is two types of uh, tithe. There is tithe before the law and tithe in the law. Tithe in the law was directly for the Levites and to be taken care of the people over there. When Jesus died and resurrected throughout the New Testament, there is nowhere documented that the believer should give tithes. There is nowhere documented that the believer should give tithes. But now, because we believe in what Abraham did, that is why we give. So we are not forced to pay. We give because we love him. So I believe it's a matter of understanding your maker. I believe it's a matter of the revelation you have had about the scripture. So I don't give tithe because I am forced to give. I give tithe because I feel I love God. Uh, so you give tithe because you love God. That is all. And the tithing is not in New Testament. It's not in New but Testament. It's in uh, Old Testament. Abraham yeah. did. Yeah. And you said Abra Abraham gave tithe. tithe. He did not pay, pay tithe. tithe. What's the difference between giving tithe and paying tithe? When you are being ordered to pay, then it means it's an obligation. Mm -hmm. Compulsory by force. Whether you like it or yes, you have to do it. Which is an obligation. Which is not what the Bible teaches. 
That is why I said nobody told Abraham to give tithe. He met Melchizedek. Are you sure? Uh, nobody, nobody told Abraham to give. You can check the scripture. So how may, how uh, the ten percent? Mm -hmm. If nobody forced him to give tithe, mm -hmm. the ten percent who told him to give ten percent, or Willingly. who said they should give the firstborns? Willingly, Abraham gave. What I'm saying is that mm -hmm. Abraham was not following any instructions. Instructions. He was not. Not. So he himself decided, decided. to give out ten percent. Yes. Check through the scriptures very well. Abusia. <laughs> so Abraham willingly gave gave ten percent ten percent of everything. The he first had. thing that it, is it not God that told them to give the first fruit? No, it is not God. Abraham's case. Abraham gave because when he met Melchizedek, Melchizedek blessed him, and out of the blessing Melchizedek blessed him, he decided to give ten percent. So the, in the Old Testament, the Bible, God didn't command anybody to pay tithe. God commanded people to give tithe. Who? In the who, Old who Testament. Were those? He commanded the people of the Israelites to give tithe to the Levites because the Levites were not working. But Abraham gave willingly. Abraham and still gave, gave willingly. 10%. He still gave 10%. Nobody told Abraham to no. give tithe. Nobody. He gave tithe willingly. willingly. Do you have tithe cards in your in your your church? You see, every church had tithe cards. Okay. When will you pay the, the, the right? Okay. Do you have one in your church? My church, I've not seen one yet. Uh, you don't have tight card Yeah, in I've your not church. seen one yet. But people pay tight. Yeah, people Willingly. give. We give. We don't pay. We, we give. You give tight. tight. You don't pay. Yeah. That, that's what I want to understand. Yeah. Giving is willingly. Giving is and willingly. And paying is what? It's an obligation. And paying is what? It's an obligation. That like you should Like you by force. Yeah, force. Yeah, so. How do we force someone to pay yes. something? How? Yes. Now, so that is why I said, when... Well, Tight is being taught well contextually. That's what I said. In the law of Bible study, where the word was first mentioned, that is where the word originated from. Did and Jesus pay tight? Jesus never gave tight. He, he doesn't love God. Okay. Now, we also have to understand the duty of Jesus. Why did Jesus Christ came to the earth? We have to understand why Jesus came. Jesus never, because before Jesus came to the scene, people were rich. Before Jesus came into the scene, people had houses. So the essence of the coming of Jesus was not to make anybody rich. Jesus never came to make anybody rich. So what is the essence of the coming of Jesus? The mission statement of Jesus, Matthew chapter 1, verses the number 21. You shall bring forth a son. His name shall be called Jesus. He shall save people from their sins. That was what Jesus came to do. He so came he, to restore so us he, back to Christ. So he didn't pay tight. I ask yes. that because mm -hmm. you said you people, it's not in the New Testament, mm -hmm. but you pay because you love God. Yeah, that's it. So that's why I'm asking mm -hmm. why Jesus didn't pay. Does okay. he not love God? That's why I said it, there is the difference between what he came to do on the planet Earth. Let me give you an example. Now, Abraham gave tight. Are you saying that the fact that Abraham gave tight and people like Paul also didn't give tight? Are you saying that Paul loved God more than Abraham? It is you who said that you will pay because so you love God. Give, so, so you tell me why all those people didn't pay. Very good. Is it because they didn't love God? No. Or their purpose was different from your purpose? Their purpose are different from my purpose, number one. And my revelation is different from their revelation. Ah. Yes. So what are you we reading? Their, are you reading their scriptures or you have your own we, scriptures? I read their scriptures, but uh -huh, out so, of their scriptures, we draw revelations. So your revelations doesn't have a book, but their revelation mm -hmm. that is different from yours has a book and you are reading. Don't get me wrong. Uh -huh. What I'm saying is uh -huh. that nobody told Abraham to give tithes, number one. Abraham gave tithe willingly. Who told Abraham to give? Nobody. When Jacob was going to a place, the Bible said when Jacob slept on the stone and the next day when he saw the heavens, then he said, if you help me and I go and I come, I will give tithe. So Jacob also gave based on his personal revelation. Then it was documented. So I believe the blessings of Abraham are mine. I'm speaking for myself over here. So if the blessings of Abraham are mine, then there is nothing wrong me doing what Abraham did. And so that's what I understand you perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. I am asking why Jesus and the people mm -hmm. didn't pay. Mm -hmm. Because I am asking this because yeah. you said you pay because you love God. That is my personal revelation. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. those who didn't pay. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they didn't. You, did, you don't know, I why, don't know they why they didn't. So don't you think we should take tithe out since it's not in the New Testament and we are following Christ? 
we can take it out. That's why I said it's personal revelation. That is why it's not mandatory. It's not mandatory. If okay. you feel like you want to give, fine. If somebody feels he don't want to give, fine. And you said something. You said before Jesus' time, everybody was rich. I said people were rich people before were Jesus rich. came. Uh -huh. People were rich. Mm -hmm. People have houses before Jesus, and came. Before Jesus came. So he didn't came, come to make them rich. Yes. But he came to save people, save from, sins. people from sins. Yeah. So now we use Jesus' name to do all sorts of things. We pray, mm -hmm. uh, my business should flourish. Mm -hmm. I need a visa. I need a car. Mm -hmm. We pray in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Are you saying those days, the mm -hmm. people were rich than we are now? If yes or no, you answer me. And after that, mm -hmm. you tell me why he came not for wealthy stuff. He mm -hmm. came to save people from sin. Mm -hmm. But we are using his name and his church for all these materialistic things. Okay. We don't have any statistics to prove that the olden days people were rich than us. We don't have any statistics to prove now. Because for me to be able to analyze the difference between the rich men of our generation and the rich men of the old, then we must get a statistics to prove. You understand? But what I'm trying to say is that before Jesus came, there were rich people on the planet Earth. He didn't come to make us rich, as in materially rich. Because God has created the universe and God has put in everything that can make a man rich. You don't have to be a Christian to be rich. Anybody can be rich. Anybody can be rich. So the essence of the coming of the Messiah, the reason why he came is not because we cannot make money. The reason why he came is because we couldn't save ourselves out of sin. That is why he came. Oh, so that's what I'm asking you. Yeah. That's what I'm asking you mm -hmm. that he didn't come because of, he came for, mm -hmm. to save people from sin. That's mm -hmm. why I'm saying that yeah. now we have the church built on him mm -hmm. and we use his name for mm -hmm. all sort of things, visa, cars, and all that. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. He didn't come to make people rich. Mm -hmm. He came to save people from their sins. Mm -hmm. So the name that we are using for all this wealth, and no, no, how does it work? That's it the does question. not make it wrong, okay? The fact that I did not come to make you rich does not make it wrong that I can use your name to acquire something. But this is the whole thing. When Jesus died and resurrected, whatever a man will need for life was given to him. Whatever a man will need for life has been given. So if you have given me something already, I don't need to come back to you and ask of it again. But the reason why people are using it is because they don't know what they have been given, number one. Because the Bible speaking in the book of Philemon chapter 1 verses, the Bible says we should acknowledge God who has given everything that we need, which is in us. Everything that we need. And brother Peter put it this way. God who has given us everything that pertains life and godliness. Which means whatever thing we need to be rich has been given unto us. Whatever we need to be rich has been given. And because it has been given, that is why you, you don't need to be a Christian to make money. You don't need to actually believe in what I believe in to make money. That is why even unbelievers have money. That is why unbelievers have money. And the fact that unbelievers have money means God has given us all a leverage ground. And based on that leverage ground, everybody can make money. Uh, so now you said they use the name because they don't know mm -hmm. what God has given them. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. The name is being used. Mm -hmm. And the name, the man is, was not here for our nyama nyama things. Mm -hmm. He was here for to save us from mm -hmm. sin. But mm -hmm. we use the same name for all these things that's why i'm asking you how does it work how does the name work when we turn it from the original thing that it came to do for the other ones do you get it i guess what you're saying now something can be meant to do something and sometimes you may not use it well does not mean it will not work the fact that it was meant to do this and we are using it for another thing, does not mean that it will not work. It may work, but that is not the original function of that thing. So it, are there any consequences? Let's assume this mm -hmm. is fire. Okay. We put it in that wood there, or okay. the weed outside there to burn them. It was not meant to come and destroy this house. Okay. And then you bring the fire here, mm -hmm. and this whole house will cut up with fire mm -hmm. and the whole place get burned down. Mm -hmm. It is a serious disaster that has happened. Mm -hmm. So based on your own explanation, mm -hmm. if it, it was not meant for that mm -hmm. and they use it and it is not wrong, mm -hmm. fine. Are there any consequences? 
is God is always a father. God knows how to deal with his people. And sometimes I'm not in a position to tell whether there will be consequences because every father or every parent know how to deal with his children. Oh, okay. Are we going to go to heaven? Yeah, we'll go to heaven. How, what is your concept of heaven? My concept in, yes. of heaven? Yes. I believe there is heaven. And uh, I believe that heaven is not at last. Heaven is at first. I believe the day you got born again, you are in heaven. Oh, okay. So you believe heaven is here? I believe heaven started from here and will still end up there. Uh, tell me. I, I want to know how it starts from here okay. and how we end up there. In the book of Hebrew, uh, Ephesians, the Bible says we are seated in the heavenly realm, which means the believer was born into heaven. That is why the Bible says we are citizens of heaven. Which means the day you became born again, you were born into heaven. So your heaven started the day you became born again on the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Now, because I am already in heaven, that is why when Jesus should appear, I will, my body will give up and I will take over the immortality. And I will be with him forever. Oh, okay. So everybody that is born here is already in heaven. Anybody who is born again. So everybody that is born here is in at where? Anybody who is born again is already I'm in heaven. I'm coming two things. Mm -hmm. Everybody that is born again mm -hmm. is already in, in heaven. heaven. So everybody that is born here, mm -hmm. not born again, no. mm -hmm. born here is at where? Is in where? You I get don't it? Understand. You don't understand? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am born here. Okay. I'm not a born, a, a, I am not a born again. again. I am born here. Mm -hmm. Where am I? Okay. You are also born here mm -hmm. and you are born again mm -hmm. and you are already in heaven. Okay. Explain this too. Okay. When you are born here, we are on the planet Earth. This is the planet Earth. Now, when a man who is born on the planet Earth decides to become born again, according to scripture, he or she lives on two realms. You live in the physical realm, which is the earthly realm, and also in the heavenly realm. How does it, how do you do, how does it operate? You are here in the heavenly realm, I okay. know. The heavenly, uh, on the uh, this planet, realm. Uh, huh, earthly realm. Okay. We know, and so when you become born again, okay. then you are in the heavenly realm. realm. What is the, the realm? Heavenly realm, is it third dimension, four dimension? What dimension is that? And how do you know you, me okay. that is in this planet okay. Earth, and you that is in heavenly realm? What's the difference between the two of us? What are the things that you can possible, possibly do okay. that I cannot do because I am in the earthly realm? Earthly realm. Mm -hmm. I understand the question yeah. very well. Now, we believe, according to my faith as a child of God, as a Christian, I believe, and I go according to the scriptures, if the scripture tells me that the day I became born again, I was seated with Christ, it is my faith that connects with the scripture. And I believe what the scripture says. Now, God is a spirit. We have not seen God. We, see, we connect to God through faith. We connect to God through faith and through our knowledge of him. That is how we connect to God. So if the scripture tells me that the day I became born again believer, that day I am in the heavenly realm, I believe that one. Now, what happens is that your knowledge in the word of God gives you advantage over the person who don't have knowledge in the word of God. So the difference is that my knowledge in him gives me an advantage over the one who don't have knowledge in him. And so tell us, we want to know, we are learning from you. Mm -hmm. What advantage, like I said, mm -hmm. what are the possible, the possible things you mm -hmm. will do that someone who mm -hmm. is born on planet Earth would do? Like we want to know, let's say people are watching us. Okay. It's not everybody that has the knowledge okay. like me. Mm -hmm. So I want to know mm -hmm. how... We okay. so see, oh yeah, you are in the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. heavenly realm. Mm -hmm. But it can be so dimension be in a realm mm -hmm. no wo. What am I saying? And now who na who heavenly realm no? What are the possible things that may who wo wo? It be your knowledge, mm -hmm. knowledge. Now who wanna be my way? You say why? You say why? You say me so so I may wah na me ni heavenly realm no. What are the possible things that may? Do you do you get it? I get where you are mm -hmm. coming from. So it is it is it is. Uh, it will be dependent on the person you are dealing with, number one. When it comes to me, as a child of God, 
my knowledge gives me an advantage over a lot of people because sometimes when I go through circumstances based on my knowledge, how to handle things becomes much more simple. Very, very simple to me because of my knowledge in him. Number two, sometimes when it comes to the things I want to do pertaining my life, I believe in what I do very well and it gives me it gives me a level ground for me to achieve that which I want to achieve. Which means I don't struggle in what I want to do. Because you are in the heavenly realm. Because I'm in the heavenly realm. So simply put, mm -hmm. those who are not in the heavenly realm mm -hmm. will struggle before they put things together. Is that correct? It can be possible. It can be possible. Yeah. So the the heavenly realm, no. Mm -hmm. What realm is it? We have dimensions. We have realms. Mm -hmm. Even the Bible say we have realms. Mm -hmm. Which realm is that? We are seated. That is why I was very specific. Specific. Sorry. We are seated with Him in the heavenlies. Yes, I understand that very perfectly. Good. But I'm asking. So when the scripture was speaking, the scripture never gave us the dimension in which we are seated with him. Mm. The scripture says we are seated with him in the heavenlies. So that's all. That is you what the scripture says. You don't find out what heavenlies mm. is because mm. the Bible itself mm. has said seven heavens. You know this. In the seven heavens, in that contest, he was referring to a specific contest. So the scriptures, we don't take them out of scripture. We don't take them out of context. Mm. In every context and what he's saying, for instance, when the Bible speaks of world, world, John 3, 16, for God so love the world. The word there is world. In the book of 1 John, the Bible says, do not love the world, nor anything in the world. It's what the, world is, was he talking about? Very good. Mm -hmm. So that's why I was speaking of mm. context. Uh -huh. So one is anios, one is cosmos. Mm. So until we understand the context. Make us understand. Which, Make us understand. So I, that's what I'm explaining. Mm -hmm. So until we understand the context in which the scripture is speaking, we may generalize everything which may be wrong. Mm. When the Bible speaks about John 3 16, for God so loved the world, he was talking about the cosmos. For God so loved the world, the cosmos is where people live, where people dwell. And when God said, do not love the world, he was talking about Aeneas. The Aeneas is the thinking pattern of the unbeliever. So when he said, do not love the world, what actually the Bible was saying is that, do not be thinking as an unbeliever. There's a different world for them. A Very good. Unbeliever has this world. And then this Not that they have their world, it, but you were speaking in context. That's what I'm saying. That is it. So cosmically, mm -hmm. we are and our news, so yeah, we believe in it. Am I not correct? No, you have not gotten this. Cosmos, the dwelling place of human beings. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Aeneas, the thinking pattern of an unbeliever. Uh, hey, you are watching the biggest and the largest. The topic here does marriage comes with a prophecy? That's his topic. Please, what is prophecy? Prophecy is declaring the word of God. The word of God. What is the word of God? The word of God is a person. Jesus himself is the word of God. The word of God is a person. Jesus himself is the word of God. So let's put Jesus aside. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying take it away. Mm -hmm. He's your savior. So um, putting Jesus aside, mm -hmm. when you say the word of God, mm -hmm. what is that? That's what I'm explaining. Yes. So the word is a person. A person. A person. Who? Jesus. Oh, okay. So prophecy is Jesus. Prophecy is declaring Jesus. Is declaring Jesus. That is all. That's all. Yeah. So when somebody prophesied that this year election, this one will win, this one will lose. Someone prophesied that um, this one, your husband will leave you and it's all Jesus. It's not prophecy. That one is word of wisdom or either word of knowledge. So what is prophecy? That's why I said declaring the word of God. You see? Declaring the word of God. What is the word of God? You said Jesus. So that's what I'm saying that mm -hmm. every prophecy, when we go to church. Okay. The prophecies that come, mm -hmm. I've been there, I'm an apostle. 
I'm not disputing the fact yes. that you're an apostle. So when we go to church, okay. you and I know, uh -huh. said that we have prophetic uh, uh, time, need okay. prayer, need the end day. Okay. All the prophecies we receive okay. is that Jesus. That's, That's what, what I'm, I'm explaining. Saying. That's what I'm also explaining. Mm -hmm. You see, the fact that we go to church and somebody prophesy about uh, somebody will win an election, then they tame it prophecy does not necessarily make it a prophecy. The Bible teaches we have word of wisdom, we have word of knowledge, we have discernment of spirit and prophecy. But it saddens our generations that this for you team in your prophecy. Okay, which so is now said the in topic in this one. Said the young call on a time in your wasted in tea. Figure out only Jesus' prophecy mm -hmm. and tell us that when you hear someone saying it's okay. a prophecy, uh, the, the, the Jesus' For prophecy. Instance, when I wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. which I don't need a prophet to prophesy to me, when I wake up in the morning, I look through the mirror and I declare that I shall not die. I will live to declare the works of God. I've prophesied. You've prophesied Jesus. I've prophesied Jesus into my life. Oh, okay. You yeah. shall not die. You live in to declare the works of God. Uh, that is I've one. Prophesied. Give me three. I said, give me three. That is one. Give you three yes. in terms of Jesus's prophecy. When I wake up in the morning once again, and I say, I shall not be there. I shall not be there till I shall be the head. The I've same prophesied. thing you are giving me now is the same. Mm, that is prophet. Jesus' prophecy. It's prophecy. So the rest, the word of wisdom, word of wisdom, word of wisdom is different from prophecy. They are not the same. I teach them to understand. That one is a different topic altogether. I know. I, mm. I'm not here. Yeah. Like your people. My, my, my people, they know. Uh, teach them. My because people, when you know. people go to mm -hmm. church, you don't tell them what you are saying. Jesus prophecy. You still prophesy to them. People and you teach. people call it prophecy. People teach. Uh, I know people teach. Yes. But the prophecy thing you are saying here mm -hmm. now, everybody that is watching us now yeah. will attest to that fact that your bishop will not be in the church mm -hmm. and say, and, and give. it means you don't mm -hmm. give Jesus prophecies in church. According to your definition, because if you wake up mm -hmm. in the morning mm -hmm. and you don't need a prophecy mm -hmm. and you prophesy to yourself and that is what Jesus' prophecy is all mm -hmm. about, then the prophecy you people give in church is different from Jesus' prophecy. Do you get it? You have given us different types of prophecy. Mm -hmm. We have accepted. Mm -hmm. We understand. Mm -hmm. But we are trying to understand Jesus' prophecy mm -hmm. here. The one that you tame as prophecy. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That one you say when you wake up. When you wake up, I wanted to get. I wanted to know whether it happens in the. It church. happens in church. And so also. give us one, so people will know that when I hear this, this is a word of wisdom. But so, center I it around this okay. prophecy. Okay, there. I understand where you are coming from mm -hmm. now. Now, necessarily, you don't. That's what I said. You don't need somebody to tell you I'm giving you Jesus prophecy. That was why I wanted you to let me start from the way I wanted to start. Then you will get me right. When you ask me, what is prophecy? Then I told you. Prophecy is declaring the word of God, which means sometimes somebody may not tell you that I have seen this, I have seen that. So when I declare the word of God, I can just pick a scripture, read it to your life, and I've prophesied. I don't need to see anything. Exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why I'm saying that the Amodema was sorry, this is the only bino. My yeah, yeah, few can I say about one of working very good. The pastor, if I will, word of God, no, no, or declare good life or life, he has prophesied. You obey that now, you obey that need to say, Jacob, the idea, a Jesus prophecy, you are prophesying, yes, and one of my very simple. Your your topic is that marriage comes with prophecy. Into that marriage that comes with prophecy, no. Mm -hmm. This topic, you know, the prophecy at the bottom, mm -hmm. is it Jesus' prophecy or so word of wisdom? Or which, that, define that first so okay. that we will understand okay. what you are coming to talk what about. What I'm saying is that marriage does not come by prophecy. Marriage does not come by, by prophecy. prophecy. So that prophecy, you no. Know, one mm -hmm. my prophecy bear mm -hmm. four different types. Very good. Into the one you are using here, yeah. which one? I'm, I'm, I will deal with the word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Okay. Okay. Prophecy in the other two. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. dealing with the word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Does marriage come in that dimension? Yes. Yeah. 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 I know the problem be anyone. Yes. That is who prophetic yeah. Yeah. because yeah. they see our betraying. <laughs> Different. Uh -huh. So we want to know what yeah. you are saying. We know how we to know how the question. Okay. And so that's. Um, <laughs> Does mm. marriage come by prophecy? Mm -hmm. I believe strongly marriage don't come by prophecy. Marriage is a personal finding. When I see grace and I think I am okay with grace and we can move, I don't need somebody to tell me that grace is your wife or uh, Randolph is your husband. No. If your church has taught you very well and if personally you've sat down to learn a lot of things when pertaining to marriage, when you meet somebody and you are comfortable with the person, you know it. You don't need a third person to speak to you. 
or you don't need somebody because in our generation we live in a generation whereby a, a guy will meet a lady then the next moment the lady will carry the guy's picture to a prophet check if this is from god if we can marry i am not against it but the moment we make it doctrinal it is very wrong because grace's experience cannot be my experience the fact that your marriage was prophesied does not necessarily means my marriage should also be prophesied okay so now wh when we see them the guys and we want to marry them it's your personal finding. You do your personal finding. That is why in the olden days, so Opesa will worry out. Your father, your parents will go into the guy's house to investigate. It was the pastor had nothing to do with that. It was family. Really? Yes. It are was you, are family. You not, are you people not into people's marriages now? So Some that is, of your your fellow pastors, they will even sleep with the <laughs> girls uh, when they are tired, uh, they push it to another So that boy. is why we are correcting no, it now. More areas, no more, you more balance, so that is why we are correcting hey. it now. So mm. we are correcting it. Yeah, this one, they should go to churches and tell the pastors, why are you telling us? so uh, take us through uh, your, your topic and uh, okay. things people should not do and la 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 la. Oh, okay. Okay. When it, as I said, when it comes to marriage, it's personal. Uh, the Bible is speaking saying that he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor from the Lord. So marriage is personal findings. Now, number two, in the book of Numbers 36 from the verse number six, the Bible speaks about a man who was only having women as children. And in the history of Israel, as at that time, women was not supposed to inherit the inheritance that belongs to their father. So the Bible said this man died. And when the man died, the women went to Moses, who is a prophet and they asked Moses it's true this is what our tradition says but we also want the inheritance that belongs to our father so the Bible said Moses went to God in prayer this is where I want to emphasize that Moses is a prophet Moses went to God in prayer and told God that this is what the women are saying what should I do the Bible said God told Moses tell the women what they are saying is true but tell them let them go marry men of their choices now this is where I want to emphasize if in those days God could tell a prophet to tell the women that they should marry men of their choices and God has never changed which means consistently God wants people to make their choices God? Yes Is it not the same God that told Isaac and Rebecca's marriage? Do you remember? What did he tell them? You don't know that they said um, uh, he, Isaac and Papa Papa Nehedia you know Abraham a a Abraham mm -hmm. sent for the people to go and look for a wife for Isaac. Mm -hmm. Is it not God that commanded that? No. Who who did that? So Why did Abraham, Isaac go and find his wife? So wait, like you were saying. Very good. Uh -huh. According to theologians, Isaac married at the age of 40 years. When Isaac was 40 years, the father, Abraham, was the one that came to Abraham, Isaac that I want you to marry. But then Isaac never knew anything about marriage. So the Bible said Abraham called hey. one of the servants of the house. Then told the servant, I want you to search for me a wife for Isaac. But he directed Isaac the house he should, he directed the servant the house he should go. So he directed him, said, go to this house and get for me a wife. So before the servant will leave the house, then the servant made a prayer that any woman I will first meet who will treat me well and treat my donkey well, I will marry such a lady for Isaac. Ah, so, so the women, they, they should go and find themselves, but men, they... Somebody should find for so, them. No, I'm speaking contextually. I want you to understand me. I'm not saying as in go and find, as because in go and find. Because the, the reason why I'm asking mm. this is that mm. Almost the the men in the Bible, no, mm -hmm. their wife was given to them and I'm a bottom. Very good. And the, okay, Very even good. your Jesus' mother, mm -hmm. the wife was given to Joseph. Omutuntonto, he was not given. Omutuntonto. Omutuntonto, Very good. Mary Omutuntonto, read the scripture very well. And me, and who read the scriptures very well. Omutuntonto, I was married so, and they bought Joseph, and Joseph married Mary. Tonto pa. Yeah. In the olden days, it was there. That was what they were doing. Abusia. And he says, "Yeah, man, I'm here beside you. He says, 'What can we do? Just Moses, the Anayem, Fatumo, any 
a tara ni ni ano mu fo no a o mu lusu o mu we no na ya si o mu nkonko ware men of their choices nti we betumi a kire me mba ni bi nsusu a because something kura say ya si o kwa ware eyi na nyakopon kura ka kire the same eyi samon ware joseph ana hwan ya samon ware a stranger ana me bodam abraham abraham ya ana me bo is it not god that told abraham that they should not marry strangers ana me bo we stranger Ah no, is that scripture not scripture? No, you are taking it out of context. That is why I want you to stay. I just want to know context. why God should tell some people okay. that don't marry here. And okay. you are saying that okay. they should marry their choice. Very That's good. why I'm asking this Very question. Good. That is why I'm also helping you as all ah. over here. Now when, that's why in the beginning I said, when we are taking scripture, we can take it in context as to what the person was saying that particular moment. Okay. Either than that, we will always be out of context. Now, mm -hmm. from the onset of scripture, from the onset of scripture, marriage has always been that you go and get your own wife or you go and get your own husband. How you get it? Through the entirety of the document called scripture, it was only one person God came to that go and marry a prostitute, and that's the prophet Uzziah. Very good. Because of the plan, that's why I said somebody's experience cannot be your experience. You understand? Mm. Because of the plan God had for that man, which all of us cannot tell. Very good. From that day. From that day, one man man force. Hey, now one man choice. One man choice. I'll be sure I'm Ah, the sin day. Even yeah. Adam will obey boy, you baby on your knee, you in the same day, and I'm robot. I'm member the member the month for her. Now we tell 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 Now we should understand that when it comes to marriage, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, God has always wanted it to be a choice. And God, we are, I tell people wherever I go that I'm not against when people prophesy about your marriage, but the moment it becomes doctrine there is something wrong with it because grace's experience cannot be my experience we all have different experiences you have said that yes why, I, did, I, why did god tell the other one to go and marry a prostitute that's what I said. Oh, yeah. so in the mind of god god was doing something to him he knows best so if god can do something to obi mm -hmm. he knows best in mm -hmm. terms of marriage okay and some people mm -hmm. he will allow them to go and marry okay then why are we having this conversation okay because god can uh, somebody's marriage can come through prophecy i'm not against it so why are we having this conversation so what i'm saying is that when somebody's the fact that your marriage came through prophecy does not necessarily mean my marriage should also come through prophecy <laughs> <laughs> uh, because they are okay, it's still there. Mm. It's mm. not everybody's marriage that comes through prophecy. So that's why I gave and an illustration. And some people's marriage will come through prophecy. Mm -hmm. So this is not a case mm -hmm. for us to bargain. So that is why I said, we live in a generation where you say something on social media right away. Mm -hmm. In our dispensation in social media, where everybody meets somebody and the next thing is they send pictures to men of God to verify. Is that not a good thing to do? No. You should not ask. No. Uh, you should not find out. No. No. Really? No. You see, that hey, is what... I'm finding out in a man just says spiritually, mm -hmm. dear woman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the problem we are die. facing today. I don't believe you are one. I don't believe in that. 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 But Obi, you don't believe in that. Oh, me can't say believe. In some cases, your experience cannot be my experience. Mm. Then you don't come and teach us your experience. No, I'm not teaching experience. <laughs> I am teaching the scripture. <laughs> Okay, teachers, what, what teachers. does the scripture say? That is where I want us to dwell. Okay. In Islam, from the book of Numbers, for you to understand that in your be they never but through that dimension. Don't worry. Being a pastor, I have had many uh, pictures on my phone where people will call you, check, is it from God? Really? Check, is it from God? And sometimes I ask them, oh, why should I check? But on a more serious note, is marriage from God? In terms of what? Ah, marriage is terms one. Mm. Marriage, marriage is from, from God, God. From and you are asking me in terms of yeah, marriage is from God. And so, in terms of then and now, person who and some person who will be with the fever. Ah, me say it's marriage from God. Yeah, marriage is from God. Now, so baby, I'm the fever. Uh, what channel is I? Maybe I know the channel back on. <laughs> It's not that any serious. Yeah. It's very serious. Mm. 
because ebi mo wenyo wehu obi ebi wo ho no ma na ni nipa no wo single room mu o so fo be ka tense wo kunu ye so fo be bi the same person can be a pastor that but what it is here no narrow eh na narrow way and na dey bro for nasa na wo dey wo so dey wo kan no i'm not saying you say it's not uh, actually important mm. because marriage is baby too good so for better to ban our ware no on your way it's something that is happening mm. but how to put it well no is mm. also a problem mm. because if i have a leader mm. or a pastor that i believe in as mm. a spiritual person mm -hmm. and i make sure you be na me to me ma on find out on she mu so ma me no so so yeah something else okay so put these things that are happening and why we should not focus on these men of god ra 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 put it together and make construct it well for people to understand and use it do you get it yeah, I get because me be worry am so for there eh say me no discuss about the nega say am your counseling me boy eh yeah yeah and you your counseling am say say me kwhwe say ko guy no work onya na say it's never true i won't tell that o me me tell that you've never heard that they go and check if the guy has a place and all that me what there yeah yeah be that Yes, yes, yes. So what I'm saying is that mm. what I'm saying is that as I said from the beginning, we are not against whatever thing that is happening. But I feel say yen yen no quite so well. Very good. Mm -hmm. Now that's why I started by saying in the olden days, so we sure bar. It was never the responsibility of a pastor. It was the responsibility of your parents and my parents. They do the investigation. Along the line, originally, marriage is for family, but not for the church. Originally, marriage is a family affair, but not for the church. The only reason why I tell my pastor is because I value him. I love him. I respect the leadership over his life. But my pastor cannot dictate as to whom I should marry. He can counsel me. He can advise me. But he cannot do the selection. Mm. My pastor cannot do the selection. Because I know a bishop who has sacked actually a pastor. For me, I am not sure. 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 In fact, I can show where the church yeah. is. I'm in Bodhi. Mm. Estee Janshin Temaha. Then, the guy found found a wife in the church. Mm. So, for me, I'm in the church. We are in the church. Like, joke, like, we're permanent if you're sorry. So, because, we're already on one day, man. Very good. Almost just so my girls, and now, my dada, no, my person, no, no, my obi. Now, I'm going to TV film, I'm going to cry. I have one million cases in my office. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. That's wrong. Tell them. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that your pastor cannot choose for you. Mm. You have to sit down, analyze yourself, know where you are going based on where Pastors you are, are going. Pastors are watching you. You know that. Oh, I'm not afraid. I am much more prepared. Really? Oh, ahead. very, very tell prepared. Them. So them. based on where you are going, that is where you choose a partner. Your pastor can advise you, but he cannot force you whom you should marry. You can even tell me, marry Grace. If Grace is not appealing to me, I can decide, irrespective of whatever thing you think as a pastor. Mm. Because I feel very strong that if uh, church members are taught well, as I said from the onset, if church members are taught well, there are things they can deal with themselves. Because remember, the child of God is not a grandson of God. He's also a child of God. And God has access of talking to the believer. God don't only talk to pastors. God should talk to every believer. Sir? Every believer is supposed to hear the voice of God. Every believer. So if you teach the church well, if you've taught the church well, then the member will know what is right for him or her. The member can do a personal selection. And the only time the pastor will come in is when I need an advice, I need a specific counseling, and when we need blessing. That is all. But it is not mandatory that or someone will show him come by force. Now we train me, ni ame me unkofa. No, it is never true, and the Bible never teaches that. Catch that. So for no more yesterday, now we catch him. So I feel every pastor 
forcing marriage on the members maybe as to whom they should marry i feel very well that we should stay to the bible let's stick to the bible what is the bible teaching pertaining marriage let's stay to that and please do not allow yourself to be used as a medium to destroy the life of somebody because you want the person to marry a specific person god bless you god bless you sir. <laughs> What do you say about divorce? <laughs> Since you are preaching marriage, you mm. know divorce is killing you people in the church. What do you have to say about Kill, it? Killing everybody, not the church. Where you are, you are, where you are coming from? <laughs> That's why I'm going your way. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. And now you are here for yeah. the world. I'm here for everybody. 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 Yes. The are more more cosmic. Oh, baby. Me now. Me buy. So since marriages are breaking off. Okay. The, for we are saying the we are go on your problem. Mm -hmm. It is you people who hate divorce, mm -hmm. and now you people are divorced from your bishop to the mm -hmm. usher. What's bringing about this? What can we do about this? Okay, now I think uh, when it comes to marriage, I think people got married at the state where they were not right in their thinking. A lot of people, a lot of people married when they were not right in their thinking. A lot of people were not even sure of themselves when they got married. A lot of people in a situation, they got married. So after some times, they realized that, okay, this is not actually the person I, I wanted to marry. This is not actually the person I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. Now that maybe, for instance, I may be a very broke guy today. And because you are helping me, I may decide to marry you. But on a natural shell, I wouldn't have married you if I had money. Consolation price. Very good. So many marriages that are breaking today, we have to go back and look at the foundation. What made them to get married? And majority, it has been stated, it has been confirmed, there are a lot of people married at the point where they were not thinking right. Hey, this thing is serious. Though. Yeah. Do you know in the scripture, it said that when you get someone impregnated, yeah. you should be forced to marry the person. Yes. Do you know that? In the book of Numbers. Uh, whether you think it right or not, mm -hmm. you are forced to marry mm -hmm. the person. Yes. So this one, if you you are forced to marry the person out oh. of help, okay. and you come to realize that now I am in my rightful frame of mind, okay. you leave the person? Is okay. it possible? So now, let me, let, let's explain this one. That is why in the olden days also, when the scriptures say that, in the olden days, when you read the history of Israel, there were rampant of divorces in their era. So the Bible said when Jesus came to the scene, the people went to Jesus and they said to Jesus that Moses said, if you want to divorce somebody, give the person a letter and divorce the person. Then Jesus have to correct the notion by saying that it is the hardness of your heart. So Jesus admits that men's hearts are very hard. He admitted, he said, it is the hardness of your heart that made Moses to give you that, that law that if you want to divorce your wife, bring a letter. But from the beginning, it was not so. Which means the heart of men can lead people to take a decision which they may not like it. Uh, so that's what I'm saying right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. The Bible still hate divorce. And yes. it has changed. The Bible hate divorce. The and Bible is not against yes. the Bible is against divorce. But I teach. I teach according to according to scriptures also. I teach because when you read scripture very well, uh, uh, the Bible never make excuse when it comes to divorce. But I teach at a point of death. You shouldn't stay. Is it in the Bible? The fact that it's not in the Bible does not mean I'm I cannot asking, advise. Yeah, said, That's what I'm also saying. That is why I was very specific that the Bible is clear about divorce, but I teach. I was very specific. You are adding up. I'm not adding up. Okay, the Bible okay. didn't tell you don't I don't subtract. Okay. Bible says so, I hate. Okay. You are also say I'm okay. at the verge of okay. death. Those okay. don't stay. Okay. There hey, are many shuffle. things. There are many things the Bible never said we are doing them. The Bible never said we should paste, but you paste. Uh, so now you are adding up. <laughs> the Bible never said we should we should we should paste our teeth, but we paste. Mm. So then leave them and let them <laughs> marry under prophecy. So the, the marriage, on a more serious mm -hmm. note, is mm -hmm. very rampant in the church. Mm -hmm. What can we do about it? When they leave, mm -hmm. when the marriage is broken, mm -hmm. the man will leave the church and mm -hmm. leave the children and their mother for you. Mm -hmm. Also for no need time. Po. There, it's happening. What can we do? Is there any strategy? Is there anything we can apply to yes. save the marriages? Yes. Since you are saying when yeah. it is coming to your neck, you should not stay. Yeah. Because you see, many marriages in our dispensation, uh, people died because they were abused. I don't support abuse. The and mema woman. Very. We, we, you see, let's face reality. If but our why sister, would a Christian even beat the wife? Very good. That is why I said uh, we are, are not taught right. All the time. People are not taught right. Who are those? Very good. 
Christians are not taught right. Which, which kind of Christians are those? Every Christian is a Christian. So you don't teach them well? I said, we are not taught right. That That's is what, not, that's no, you, so you, you, not are the, the, you are the, you are the boss. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. It's not that is why some of us we, we've come out very boldly and we are saying some of these things that hey when we teach people right the bible says the bible made an illustration when it comes to how a man should treat the wife and the wife should treat the husband you understand when the bible say uh, husbands love your wife even as christ loved the church christ loved the church unconditionally and he said women should submit to their own husband not pastors they should submit to their own husbands even as submitting to christ mm even as submitting to Christ. So both of them, there is a cross. But the truth of the matter is that we like submit, but we don't adapt unto Christ. We like love, but we don't, to, we don't want to submit unto Christ. So the problem is that we have taken a part of the scripture that will sweeten us and we are following and we've left the other ones. That is why there are a lot of divorce in the church. So I feel strongly Pastors should have time. Let us do marriage seminars. If that will help, let's do marriage seminars and let's have personal time because the Bible is speaking in the book of Jeremiah. I will give you shepherds who will feed you, which means the responsibility of a pastor is to feed the church. So if it's going to be possible, let's have one-on-one -on -one session with our married couples. Let us try to understand what they are going through and let us face them one after the other. If there is a solution we can bring on board, let's talk to them. Let us understand the difficulty difficulties they are going through, if they can be educated about some things, let's bring people who have resources so they can be nurtured, so they can sustain their marriages. The pastor should do that. Yep. The, the, the pastors themselves, mm -hmm. they are bishop. They mm -hmm. themselves, their marriages are breaking off. So when you hold a conference, <laughs> you yourself, who are feeling? Uh, no. Uh, no what? So, um, in yes, so we are not worried, so you I'm not saying that. Too. Very good. We are talking about the failing ones. So, you are saying mm -hmm. the pastors should organize mm -hmm. conferences mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. to help. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that mm -hmm. the pastors themselves, mm -hmm. almost so your part. It's your part is not normal. Oh, but they can the still do it. So I can organize a conference and bring a resource person. Uh, yeah. A resource person. Yeah, then you come and speak okay. to us. I can organize a conference, bring a resource person. Come so and it's all us. about talking to people. It's all about talking to people, mm -hmm. standing with them, understanding their pain, understanding their perspectives and being with them. And being with them. Yeah. What's your take on polygamy? I don't believe in that. So in case the person is killing the person, the person left, mm -hmm. the man should marry again. Is if it you okay? want, you But can the Bible marry. says you should not marry until the other one is dead. Is so, it not in the Bible? So, you see, sometimes when I hear people saying it's in the Bible, I have issues with it. Ah, but is it not in the okay, Bible? Okay, so let me explain. No, so let me explain. I said something earlier. You see, sometimes when we speak like that, then it means... Do you also know it's in the Bible that we cannot do mass farming, but we do mass farming? And that's what I'm saying. So the fact that something is in the Bible does not make it applicable. Oh, okay. <laughs> because it's in the Bible that we shouldn't do mass farming. How do you see our conversation, me and you, our episode? How do you see it? Oh, me, I'm just enjoying myself. <laughs> <laughs> from your last words, advise the public, okay. especially the youth, because okay. you are part of them. Yeah. Uh, advise them when mm -hmm. it comes to marriage. Three things they should not do. Mm -hmm. the thing, I mean, advise okay. them. Genuine okay. advice. General okay. advice. And then when you are done, encourage those you can encourage. Okay. And then you leave your social media handles and the rest. Okay. Then we are gone. Wow. Wow. I want, to, I want to let you understand that when it comes to marriage, it's a personal decision. From the Old Testament to the New Testament, it has always been a personal decision. You have to sit down, analyze yourself very well, look at, the, look at where you want to get to in life, what you want to attain in life, and you choose a partner that will be suitable for where you are going. I keep on telling people each and every blessed day that love goes beyond feeling, but love is a decision. You decide as to whom you really want to spend the rest of your life with and the moment you make that decision you should stay glued to the decision you have made secondly i want to advise the youth also to understand that in our generation we have to stick with our creator we have to stick with our creator we should learn the scriptures for ourselves we shouldn't allow people to do as hearsay hearsay the reason why many of us are struggling when it comes to the issue of marriage is because we never sat down to study we didn't even be with resource 
people, for them to coach us, for them to train us. We were just only on social media, picking points from people. We never even investigated the point to see whether they are true or not. But we just jumped into conclusion and we made the decision. So please, I would like to encourage you. I don't know any religion you are coming from. Stay with the book you believe. Stay with your beliefs. And now make a suitable decision for yourself that this is what I want to do and stick close to it. I believe you are not a stepchild of God. You are also a child of God that when you talk to your father, your father will listen to you and your father will give you answers to whatever thing you are looking for. My name remains Reverend Randolph Menya. And if you are looking for me on all social media, I am Reverend Randolph Menya. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Because say a cousin is saving marriage in the garden of Eden. I don't know if you're not going to be a man. I'm not going to be a man. Still, I didn't say it. I'm not going to be a man. 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 I'm not going to be a man.